It's the final day of our first season in Croatia, but before we get to that, a little bit of a history lesson. The first Yugoslav club competition was organised in 1923 and was won by a Croatian side, Gradanski Zagreb. Croatia produced 10 of the 17 national champions between the formation of the National League and the onset of the Second World War. When the league recommenced in 1945, Croatian clubs continued to be successful, with Hajduk and Dynamo winning six titles between them in the years up until 1958. But from the 60s onwards, Serbian clubs became the dominant force, particularly the big two from Belgrade, Red Star and Partizan. Between 1958 and 1991, Hajduk would win just four more Yugoslav titles and Dinamo just one. By 1991, Croatia declared independence and founded its own domestic league. And whilst Hajduk had the superior record in Yugoslav football, with seven titles to Dinamo's four, the side from Zagreb have dominated Croatian football. Hajduk may have won the first National League title in 1992, but they've won just six in total, whilst Dinamo's 2023 league triumph was their 24th. In the 32 seasons of Croat football, on only two occasions has a side outside the Big Two lifted the league title. NK Zagreb were victorious in 2002, but now play in the amateur fifth tier. And Rijeka triumphed in 2017. Our club, Lokomotiva, were founded in 1940. During the period of Yugoslav football, they competed in the top division for 10 seasons, placing third in 1952, but following relegation in 1956, they would not reach that level again. With the formation of Croatian football, Lokomotiva settled into life as a third-tier side until relegation to the fourth division in 2006. At this point, the club became a feeder side for Dinamo, leading to three successful promotions. But due to league rules, they had to cut their ties to Dinamo in order to play alongside them in the top flight. Yet Lokomotiva continued to be successful, finishing as runners-up in 2013 with a young Andre Kramaric leading the line. And they were runners-up once more in 2020, even going on to be losing finalists in the Croatian Cup. But Lokomotiva have never won a major honour and despite appearing in European competition, they've never made the group stages, let alone a final. But this is, of course... A new era. So that's a very brief history of football in this part of the world. But of course, in this save, we've got our own history to catch up on. And we start at our first club, Moyola Park, who are currently looking for a new manager. Unfortunately, they were relegated from the second tier in Northern Ireland two seasons ago and have now just placed sixth in the third tier. And a player who's still in the championship is our old mate Bobby Mack. After his season with Haverford West, he's now back scoring the... Uh, Occasional goal in Northern Ireland's second tier. Speaking of Haverford West, they of course finished second in the Welsh Premier behind, yes, you guessed it, TNS. But the good news, the New Saints did lose four games. The runners-up spot is becoming somewhat of a home-from-home home for Haverford West as they finished their last season and the season before. And the season before that was our first in charge where they finished third. There is grave news as our old favourite Diamond Edwards has now transferred to TNS. Bobby Mack 2.0, Kean Kinsella has also left the club and is now at Pontypridd. The Salford Messi has moved a little closer to home, playing for Blackpool, and seems to be playing regularly in England's Championship. And do you remember Justin Hawkins, the player that walked out on us with still a game to go of the season? Well, I've no idea why, because he joined Barry in the second tier. Granted, he joined them for a promotion season and played one more year in the Premier League before moving back down to the second tier. And then we get to Riga, who of course we guided to an undefeated season as we lifted the title. But they're now halfway through their next campaign and the news, my friends, is not so good. They languished down in fifth, having lost four games already. Now, because we turned down the job at Slovan Liberex, we were able to play a couple more games in the Europa League where we beat Polish opposition and even German club Mainz. And despite defeat to Ajax, they drew at home to Monaco to set up a playoff with Fenerbahce to qualify for the knockout phase. And despite drawing at home 0-0 with the Turks, and fortunately out in Istanbul, they lost 2-0. So hopefully you enjoyed that little catch-up with our old clubs and the little history lesson about league football in Croatia might just draw you into the Lokomotiva story a little more. We've reached the final day of the season now, finally. We find ourselves in fourth place and we could, we should qualify for continental competition. 
The fifth place club only qualifies for Europe depending on the winners of the cup final, but the cup final is going to be contested between Dinamo and Hajduk, who've both already qualified for either the Europa League or for the Champions League. So it's between us, Istra, and Slav and Belupo to see who gets those final two places that'll be in the Conference League qualifiers. I think we enter in the second qualifying round. If we lose today and both of our rivals win, we're going to finish six. And we've got a tough game today as we take on High Duke Split. So that's not going to be easy. And form since the last episode hasn't really been that impressive. Following that 3-0 victory against High Duke, we followed it up with the same scoreline against Rijeka, beat Goritza 4-1, and then the poor results started to flow. We lost 3-2 to Slaven Blupo and had a man sent off. We drew 1-1 with Istra. Our last win was a 3-0 victory over Varish Dim before we lost 2-1 narrowly to Dinamo. Drew 0-0 with Osiek. Good team, no disgrace. And then 2-2 with that bottom of the table, Rudez, who we just cannot seem to beat, even though they are going down to the division belows. Today, we've got an away game against Hajduk Split. They are going to finish in third place. We've got to get at least a draw for a hope of qualifying for those European positions. And we've got injury problems to boot. Tiny Took has picked up a five-week injury, so he's going to have to come out of the side. We'll bring in the Icelandic Wilhelmsson to replace him. Net Amir has also been injured, fit enough to return to the bench today, although not straight into the starting 11. We did have a comment on one of our earlier videos about where are all the talented Croats in your squad that might have come through, as this is a nation famed for its youth development. Well, we have started to blood a few. I've been giving more game time to a goalkeeper called Sreten Hrancek, who's only 18, has got seven caps for the under-21s, is a little on the diminutive side for a goalkeeper, is a little bit more of a Shea Given than a Petar Cech, jumping reach of nine, aerial reach of eight. But elsewhere, for 18 years old, they look incredibly good. I think if we can improve their personality, their determination, their professionalism, so they train a little better, they might go on to achieve their potential and should be a good enough goalkeeper. But we've got other youngsters in our defensive line. You've seen us give game time to Krasimir Novoselic, the 18-year-old Croatian Danburn, 19 years old now. He's got three goals coming up for set plays, none of them with his head. He seems to volley them all in, starting to look like a decent centre-back could go and play on either side in the full-back positions as well. But we've got another cheeky young defender that we've found, Blazenko Krajcic, who can also play as a defensive midfielder. We're playing them as a right-back. They're not a galloping forward, overlapping, crossing right-back. But we've been playing them as an inverted full-back, and they've got a much better personality. Again, they're 19 years old. They're capped for the under-21s physically. They look really good mentally. They look excellent as well. It's only technically where they need some improvement, so they're looking good. And we've also been giving plenty of game time, primarily off the bench, to Sever, the AM, who's only 16 years old, and I think could be great, although those downward arrows don't present them in their best light currently. They've started one game. They've made nine substitute appearances, yet to get involved in a goal through an assist or actually hitting the back of the net only 16 years old so they'll only have come through the youth intake before last and if we keep them involved in the first team I think they are going to go on and develop but the hero for us the man that's almost single-handedly qualified us for Europe has not been tiny too I'm afraid he hasn't been that impressive and I'm starting to think he might be my worst signing in a long long time three goals and three assists from 16 starts, that's one and a half million pounds that I've spent. Neither as our best player being Christian Kierkegaard. Two starts, eight sub appearances, just the one assist. Not being so great, I'm afraid. A player who's perhaps turned out a little bit better has been Net Amaya. Since I moved him over onto the right wing, his performance has improved. Two goals, two assists, averages above a seven, probably enough him to stick around next season I think and Christopher Daniek's been pretty good as well again averaging above a seven five goals three assists 17 appearances but the star man has been Stanley Tucci this is 
one of the leading scorers in Croatia, 14 goals in 30 starts. The target forward holds up the ball beautifully, and if he could just rattle in a hat-trick today, he's going to become the top scorer in Croatian football ahead of people like Jean-Philippe Mateta, who's valued at over £5 million. So that would be quite the performance from Stanley. But we are playing High Duke, and that is not, my friends, going to be an easy game, and we could easily slip out of those European qualification places. So as we are from Zagreb and Hajduk are, of course, from Split, this is branded as a little bit of a rivalry, perhaps a hangover from when we were a feeder club for Hajduk's main rivals, Dinamo. But maybe that little bit of rivalry is what the players need to try and spur them on today because they've been none too impressive over the last five games, not helped by tired squad members, injuries, suspensions, but we've really not looked that good. And we've got some tactical thinking to go away and do over the summer. And we've certainly got some reshaping of the squad to go through as well. It's one of the, the biggest squads I can remember having in Football Manager. I think we've got about 60 full-time players. I like to run quite a small squad. So we're going to do a lot of trimming. Hopefully that will give us some money that we might be able to reinvest into the squad as well. And I don't know whether I might look to try and move on some of the players that I bought when we first arrived because as a whole... I don't think they've really worked out. So we're going to think about how we're going to set up next season and who's going to be here. But we would like to be preparing a squad for European football if we could. And to that end, we've got Alexi, the Macedonian, who slips it to Christian Kirkgaard. He might have gone too early. I think there's going to be a VAR review. But if this counts, that's going to be their first goal since we brought them in on a free transfer. So... They weren't so much of a risk as our other players that we bought, but they have gone too early and by a lot. Let's be honest, they're a good yard offside. It was a decent finish, but it counts for zip, I'm afraid, when you move too early. The young Croatian Dan Burn has picked up a booking. He's already been sent off once this season for an absolute horror tackle. So hopefully he's not going to do that for a second time. We're on the ball again. Alexi passes to Babania. Babania has been an absolute star for us since we took over. The players that we inherited have been way better than the ones we bought to the club. But here is one that we did sign. It's Daniek. He tests the keeper. He rattles the ball against his ankle. He goes behind for a corner that Daniek heads over to take. He slings it into the far post. Babania rises. It ripples the top of the net, but it's gone over the bar. We're looking very good. Eight shots, three on target. More than the hosts have managed to muster. But we haven't been able to score. And we're very fortunate not to give away a penalty there. But it might still lead to a goal. As Sahiti races through on the keeper. The young keeper. Whose reflexes turn it over the bar. And now we've got to get the corner away as well. Our goalkeeper is not the best at coming for aerial balls. Except he still tries to do it anyway. He did it on that occasion, got nowhere near it. The corner header goes over the bar. But we go again on 39 minutes. Here's Kirk Guard back with Big Willy into the midfield. And Daniek's going to try and craft something here. He gives it out to Kirk Guard much more lively than in any match he's played so far. He sends it back to Babania into Alexi. Kirk Guard's there again, angry that his first goal was disallowed. He's in the box, he's waiting. And he can wait some more because we're patiently playing it around. Here is our left back who's fed Daniek. I think he's kicked it into Hines' face. The goalkeeper has then chinned it onto the post. It's rolled across the goal line. And I think the away fans, it's not away fans, it's a wall by the looks of it, have sucked it into the goal. Why the goalkeeper didn't go and save that rather than tumbling backwards? I can't answer, but it means that we are at least 1-0 up, but we're not at half-time yet. We're straight into another highlight. Shopov now brings the ball forward for Hajduk. It's this Sahiti who's looked very lively. He feeds the ball to his striker. I think he was offside. He's hit the post with his finish. This is the game that will not get to half-time. It's chance after chance after... Yet another chance, and here is Crew Prosect to Willemsen, and it could be 2-0 for us if we could score. Hein tries to divert yet another shot into his own goal. 
This time he gets it wrong and it goes wide of the post. Kirkgaard slings the corner in. It falls to Daniak. Back to Kirkgaard again. He's offside. Can we finally get through to half time now without another highlight? We can indeed. I'm going to go for a lie down. So as things stand, Istra are tying their game and Slav and Balupa are losing there. So this win is actually essential to qualify us for Europe. The way things stand, but we know in Football Manager, things can change very, very quickly. And if we do our part and win the game, it doesn't matter how our two rivals get on. To that end, Hajduk have tried to come forward right at the start of the second half. They fired an effort over the bar. Now both Istra and Slav and Balupo are losing. In fact, Dinamo have scored a third against Istra. So it looks like they are done and dusted. We are going to qualify for Europe and got the opportunity to bring some reinforcements onto the pitch. Okay, we've raced through to minute 77 without any additional highlights, but now Hajduk have a corner. They've hit the bar with it, and they are really going to go searching for this equaliser, I think, because they want to finish their season positively as well. Slav and Balupo now look like they are 3-1 down, so we will surely be qualifying for those Europa Conference League playoff qualifying rounds. But can we finish the season on a high with a victory? To do so, I feel like we might have to navigate 10 pretty dicey minutes as Amir, one of the subs, brings the ball forward, gives it away. Here's Alexi to Stanley Tucci to the young 16-year-old Seva, who's been brought on for a sub and he's been involved in the goal and it's eventually come to Amir. And he has been out injured for a little while. He's not really fit enough to be on the bench, never mind in the starting lineup. We don't have a lot of quality attacking players, so I've brought him on. And he's managed to score a goal that puts us 2-0 up against Hajduk. Why is it that we can beat one of the best teams in Croatian football? But when we play the team that's bottom of the table, well, we always struggle against them. Yeah, match stats have evened up a little now. Hajduk have definitely, definitely had a better second half than they had a first. But it's to no avail for them as we run out 2-0 winners. So there's our confirmation that we will be playing European football yet again next season in the quest. I make that our fourth consecutive season of European football. But this time, we've got to make sure that we can assemble a squad that goes the furthest that we've been yet. That means trying to reach the knockout rounds of Europa Conference League.